So this video is not uh, some sort of weird complaint of like, why I didn't make it or why I'm not pro yet or my plans to be pro. It's actually in response to messages and comments of people being like, why aren't you pro? And where can I get your board and stuff like that? So I'm just gonna go ahead and explain why I don't have a board, why I don't think I'm pro and why I don't think I should be pro. Uh, but this video is actually gonna have, you know, some skating in it, uh, some Westchester footage, uh, me skating the park and um, what kind of prompted the idea of this video was in this video, like I skated with like uh, Leah Romero, who's a pro skater for Toy Machine in America, a very solidified skater. Uh, I believe he was a SOTY, he was a skater of the year. If I'm wrong, uh, then I'm actually not wrong. Thrasher's wrong for never letting him be SOTY. Uh, and also David Reyes, who's another established pro skater. And in my opinion, um, he was slept on for a long time. Like he was on plan B and they like were not turning him pro. And I think like a huge number of people, including myself was just like, what are you doing? Like, he's so good. Like, he, he's doing all the right tricks on the right spots. I don't understand. But anywho, um, kind of skating with them and seeing their mentality and how they go about skating, especially with, like, Leo, someone who's fully established, does has nothing to prove, totally could just, like, you know, kind of hang back. But he's treating it the same way that Andrew Reynolds did, where, like, he was already established, but he was still putting out his best parts, even though he didn't need to. Leo definitely has that mentality. David Reyes is also still putting out his best skating. Um, they, they, it's not even like a thing where like they're hungry to prove themselves or anything like that. They just have that mentality of pushing themselves, and seeing that in their skating is super amazing. So I'm going to kind of go into uh, what I think it takes to be a pro and then how I fall short of that. Uh, first things first, uh, basically what I just said, they have this – this drive to push themselves in skating in a way that pushes them ahead of a lot of other people. And though I do have like motivation, I constantly want to learn new tricks and I definitely want to get like better at skating. Um, it isn't like powerful enough to motivate me to try stuff that I'm scared of all the time. Like if I'm scared of a trick, uh, if you can ask any, if you ever run into like Dale or Haley or any of my friends or even people that I grew up skating with, I won't try a trick on like a handrail or downstairs unless like I have that trick so down. Like I am not very good at uh, just kind of blitzing a spot and just being like, ah, fuck it. Like what happens, happens. Like that's not me. I'm very much like, uh, oh man, I haven't fallen on a back tail in the last hundred times I tried one. Now I'll go try it down the skate park baby hubba. Like that's me. And then I'll do that a hundred times. And then I have to do, then I'll go on the bigger hubba and then I'll try it on the rail and so on and so forth. I'm not... And the other thing is I don't really like train when I skate. So I never actually go through those motions. I never am actually like, okay, going to do it on this and do it on that. Like I, I don't really skate like that. It's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Like a lot of times when I try tricks on stuff that I'm scared of, it's because like I'll randomly do a trick first try that I usually don't do first try. And I'm like, oh, like I want to do a bunch of these today. And that's how like uh, fate will drive me to get better at a trick. But for the most part, it's literally like whatever's working that day is what I play with. Uh, and other skaters... Uh, skaters who make it in skateboarding do have like a different kind of dedication where there is like training involved where they're like I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna like get really good at this trick because I want to do this trick at this handrail and do this trick on this spot and I honestly just suck at that I, I have like an insane amount of patience for learning tricks but uh, I don't really have the long-term goal set for tricks I'm just like I want to like recently I've been doing a lot of front crooks I'm sure if you saw my videos and I've been doing a lot of back tails and it's because those are tricks, two tricks that I never really had. And I will like like beat those into the ground, but there's no intention to like front crook a hand. In fact, there's zero intention to front crook, crook or back tail, anything that's really relevant. I just want to have those tricks. Whereas like to make it in skating, I think you need either a bit of a goal or at least that's one way to go about it is you need like a little bit of a goal for what you're going to do with your tricks. You have spots in mind or at least an idea of what a, or an idea of the type of spot that you would like to do it on that is relevant in skateboarding. And when I was younger, I was like that, where I tried to like do that thing. I wanted to make it in skating. So I was like, oh, like I want to do this trick on a handrail. Like I cannot tell you how long I looked for like a street hubba to Smith 360 or, or you know, a, a street handrail to hurricane some sort of variation uh which i never found either of them so that totally worked out uh actually i take that back i did find the spots but i was too scared to do it that's really what it comes down to uh and i just don't have that um that special ability to like be that scared of something and just be like go for it um anyways here's some footage of me 
not doing anything like that. It's literally me being really lazy at a skate park. Enjoy. So I just dropped Arjun off the airport. He's gone forever. Uh, actually, he's coming back in June for an entire month. So that'll be sick. <laughs> but we're, we were up really late last night. I basically am hungover from just watching him drink. Just like being in the presence of someone who has that much like energy and uh, drunken stupor. Oh, it's I just, definitely uh, can relate to that. Yeah, it's like exhausting. <laughs> like it like sucks energy out of it. Uh, it was his last night, so he was just having a good good fucking time. Watch him up at South Park again. It was, it was fine, but I'm just super exhausted. I didn't get good sleep last night. Um, so oh, let me complain about why I can't skate today, so you guys don't expect that much from me. No, I'm just gonna do like tricks that I think are like lazy and easy. Pants on. Thanks. Very low effort nose manual. This is awful. What? It's just, there's no one here, but everyone's here. I know, it's annoying. It's really annoying. Oh, let's get this hubba. So yeah, the number one uh, thing that it really takes to be a pro skater is you have to be like on a pro level. You have to be super, super good at skating. And uh, you have to be able to take that skating to a level that is, um, you know, relevant in skating. You have to be able to do stuff that not really other people can do or are doing. And uh, I'm sure like some people would argue like, I don't really see anyone doing like the slappy back one eating nose grind big spins or whatever any of the slappy tricks that I do or railies or wallies or anything like that. But the thing about that is people just don't want to do those tricks. Like I think if you took, I don't know, any C list pro skater and was like, hey, this is how this trick works, and they sat down for 10 minutes, they would be able to do all of my tricks with flip in and flip outs. Because my ability so like I don't suck at skating. I do think I'm good at skating. I've been skating for 19 years and I'm better now at skating than I ever have been. And I also feel like I'm the closest to the level of being a pro that I've ever been. And hopefully that keeps going. Um, but there's just skaters out there who are so naturally talented. They can just do whatever. They just don't bother learning the tricks that I'm doing because they're so good. They can focus on the tricks that everyone else are doing and one-upping those tricks, the tricks that everyone's fighting for. Um, whereas like I not necessarily would say that I'm doing the low-hanging fruit, but more so I'm picking my fruit from a completely different tree. Um, which in a way has its own realm of like where someone could find their way to being pro, but I'll get into that later. Um, yeah, the other way that you could be a professional skateboarder is you just are naturally talented. Um, I had a friend growing up, Josh Slapich, uh, you know, rest in peace. He uh, passed away much too soon. Like he had it. Like 
this was like, I can't even tell you what year it was. It was like 2002 or 2003. Like this is like a super long time ago where people weren't really doing too many big spin tricks besides Eric Ellington. And uh, he was like, he learned big spin front blunts on a flat bar and then learned second try, big spin front blunt, big spin out. Like skating just came natural to him. And I've heard stories similar to that about pro skaters like Eric Costins and your uh, Shane O'Neill's, where tricks just seemed to click for him. And when you watch those guys skate in person, uh, they have this glow about them. Like, it's literally like they'll just make their do board do whatever they want. And there's other skaters that aren't necessarily the technical skaters that are in a different realm, realm that have the same ability. If you've ever seen Ben Koppel uh, roller surf on Instagram, he looks very like, ah, I'm going to make my board do this thing and it's going to do that thing because that's what I want it to do. And that was also never me. I've had to work really hard for all the tricks I can do. Like, I am not naturally gifted at all. Um, really at anything. I think the only thing that I'm good at is talking shit. Like, I think I'm pretty quick with it when it comes to being negative satirically. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty much just like your, your average dude and below, below average and a lot of other things, um, like memory or staying clean or basic hygiene. But yeah, that's just, you know, I can go to the, I can go to a skate park and not fall for a while because I could do this tricks that I know that I'm going to be able to land, which is why I used to do really good in contests. Uh, I've always been like a decent contest skater, but not because I was good, but because I was pretty strategic as far as like, I know I don't fall on these tricks. So I've managed to win a few contests and place high. Actually, I did do a pro contest. I did do tour. And the way I got into it was, um, well, that's actually another story for another video, but I did do a pro contest and I did perform well. I'll actually tell that story some other time because there's all kinds of side stories and, and stuff about that whole thing. But I won like a bunch of money and I actually did come out to California to try to pursue skateboarding. Uh, now, who I was back then, um, very like when I wanted to like make it in skating, I was that dude. Like I was that annoying, is someone good at the skate park? Let me skate even harder than like trying to like very much show off for other people or like that kid who when a demo comes to town, like he's trying to send it with the pro skaters that are really like, what are you doing? Like stop pop shove tail grabbing the stairs. Like I'm trying to like skate the handrail. Like I was super annoying and super cringy and definitely rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, especially in like smaller cliques um, from like back East. Uh, so yeah, this, this to this day is still people are just like, oh yeah, Dan is the worst. And I'm like, yeah, Dan is the worst. Uh, though I don't feel like I'm that way anymore. I was that dude. Uh, anywho. Um, just totally trying to do it. And I think that mentality does work for some people. I'm not going to name names, but there's pro skaters who made it in skating because they were so focused on like being the best. Um, not that I was trying to be the best, but I definitely was trying to be better than whoever was in my vicinity and God did it backfire. Not only did I look like a complete idiot, uh, but it, it honestly, I think in a, in a lot of ways kind of hinders your skating. It kind of takes away from a lot of the fun, even though I was having fun skating, not, I wasn't having anywhere near as much fun as I am now. And I'm better at skating now, and I'm having way more fun than ever. I wish, uh, you know, this Dan could talk to that Dan. But lo and behold, uh, this Dan actually wouldn't talk to that Dan because fuck that Dan. That kid was a kook. Uh, I definitely make fun of him in my videos. So anywho, uh, actually, you know, that was a nice like, little five-minute tangent. I'll be right back. Here's, uh, I think, Leo Romero and David skating. <laughs> There's this parallel ass five stair at Westchester, and then Leo Romero and David Reyes put this fucking thing down it. Like, look at, look at this shit. It's got like a knob on the end of it. That's <laughs> so fucked. Like, the bars come out. Oh, stop. Spooky. Yeah, look how the bars come out. Like you have to like be like this. If you're too far to the side, it'll catch your plate. Woo! Oh, fuck, Leo. What win? Oh my god. Did that way too easy. You like ollied out of that board. <laughs> this real the fucking nightmare. Oh boy.
Oh. Oh, fuck. All right. That's slowly moving. Nose grind's probably the move, huh? <laughs> I really threw you in the air. Fuck you. Fuck. <laughs> now you gotta focus now, dude. <laughs> Oh. I thought I had that one. I thought you had it too. You were on it right and then the last like two feet. Sit on a 5 0 on this thing? No way. Can you imagine? It's so last, dude. I saw him coating it and then he coated it again after he coated it. When I was grinding, I didn't feel any friction at all. I just saw Well, I was watching your trucks like shuffle as you were going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's real. Whoa, did you grind the wrong side of the hubba? He did both. Oh, stop. There I go, man. It's like, I feel like once you lean into it right at this bar, you're just going to go off the end. It's just like that second commitment because it's so long. Yeah, but since it's square, you can't really like do what you do on a round round. No, you can't pinch it like you have to pinch it like a ledge. Yeah. You should do the crook to the Ethan Fowler where you land on the stairs and just like ride down. <laughs> exactly, yeah, subtitles. You like flew out the fig, you so good. You did, you didn't want to eat the double set. That was sick. Double said he throw 180 it. You got chips, yeah. you know. Yeah, style, <laughs> Ooh, kick with Manny. You can't tell, but he did kick with Manny. What do you think, out Ollie? That was wrong. So yeah, I did try to make it in skating. I got on stereo skateboards uh, at the time. The flow team was like Ryan Spencer and Josiah Gatlin, and uh, I came out to California and uh, oh yeah, Tony Carr before he got fully on, and we were going out with like Elijah Burley, and I got to go out with the guys. And I remember uh, the filmer at the time, this guy, Matt Williams, like just took us to some like gnarly stuff. Like he would take us like, like this over this rail into this gnarly bank and like all these cool spots. And everyone who I was with, Ryan Spencer and Elijah, Elijah was, Elijah was flow for um, foundation at the time. Uh, they were just like jumping on this shit. Like wherever he took them, they're like, yeah, let's just go for it. And I just remember being like, oh man, like people are so far out of my league. Uh, and if I wanted to try to keep up with them, I would really have to get good at kind of having that fucking mentality and just going for stuff and not being distracted by cars and cracks. And even the spots are way easier to get in California. When you're going to gnarlier stuff, it's, it's a lot to overcome. And I just really didn't have it in me that on top of making me seeing the way the skate industry was and just how like kind of awful it was and how like, I don't know, like there was like talk of like maybe me like dressing different from some people. And I was just like, Oh, this is not skateboarding at all. 
And this is coming from someone who was like very competitive and also already didn't understand skateboarding. So when you have someone like that realizing that the industry is not skateboarding, that's when you know it's pretty bad. So I was just kind of like, Ugh, this is like, this isn't for me. And I'm not saying that I think I could have made it in skating have if I did decide that it was for me. Um, I think at best I would have maybe got maybe am for like a legitimate company. Maybe, probably not. Um, but yeah, just it just I didn't think it was going to work. So I ended up moving back home and uh, kind of doing my own thing. Just like kind of got like a normal job, started working construction, started getting like a normal life uh, under wraps. Um, and all those people that I mentioned, Elijah Brill, Tony Carr, Ryan Spencer, uh, they all turned pro. Josiah Gallon, they all turned pro. And they fucking did it. They like it. I could see it even then when they were all flow kids. I was like, oh, yeah, like that's what it takes. And I don't have what they have. Um, so I skip forward a little bit. I ended up getting on 1031. I go on a tour with them. Got to skate with Jason Adams. Got to be around some legendary pros. Uh, Cyril Jackson was on the team when he was just like an am. And he told us actually then that he was going to go ride for Baker. And I remember everyone was just like, I don't think so. And then we saw his footage and we we're like, oh, no, I think so. Like, you're going to go ride for Baker. And he did. And he turned pro for Baker. Uh, I've seen what it takes a thousand times. I have friends now. Miles Willard. He's am for Toy Machine. And he had a cover on Thrasher while riding into a roof while he was still flow. He has what it takes. Actually, I just ran into him today. Hopefully, I got him a little side gig. We'll see. But anyways, uh, I'm friends with people who have what it takes. So I am kind of an expert on knowing uh, what I am missing to make it in skating. Uh, and I'm at a point now, though, where skateboarding has changed. Um, marketability and influence has taken a bigger impact. And I sort of burrowed my way into my own little corner of skateboarding. And as cringy and like self-centered as this might sound, I, I have developed a bit of a following that like likes the way that I skate. And I've become sort of kind of, not. I'm not gonna say uncomparable because trust me, those motherfuckers would blow me out of the water, but no one else is really doing what I'm doing. So right now I am in a position where the possibility of me turning pro without upsetting too many other people who don't think I should be pro is sort of a thing. Uh, so I might actually turn pro before I die, but it's authentically not a goal of mine. I'm not like, I want my name on a board because honestly, I kind of, I, I, if I turn pro, I, I'm not going to skate my own board. I'll tell you that much. I would like some of my friends to do the artwork for it. Um, it'd like it'd be super sick to hit up like Henry Jones or something like that. Henry's actually from back east, so I like actually knew him before he was the big artwork guy that he is. Um, or like my friend like uh, you know Alex, who's Wizard Skull. I've, luckily, uh, luckily I have a lot of friends who are just like a super talented artist now. So if that did happen, that'd be cool to have a pro model board on three block. But that is not the goal. I am saying that it is a possibility. So all the people hitting me up, being like, "Hey, uh, I, if you had a board, I would buy it." Maybe that'll happen. I don't know when. Also, maybe it won't happen because I'm not gunning for it. But I am filming a part right now, and it has been discussed. When I wrote for Pal, we also talked about me possibly turning pro. Um, but there's just too many good, hungry skaters on that team who not only want it more than me, but also deserve it more than me. Um, I mean, look at, look at fucking Zach Doling. Have you seen that kid skate? Not, like, not in my videos or his videos. Have you ever seen him skate in person? Because when you do, you're going to be like... Oh, yeah, no, he's pro, even though he doesn't have a board with his name on it. He's, like, super fucking pro. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there has been talk in my past about turning pro for some of those companies. Friendship as well. Um, it just didn't happen, though, uh, for any of those companies because I just wasn't there. I didn't have it in me. I didn't push hard enough when I was given that opportunity, and I'm super cool with that. I'm very happy with where I am right now. Uh, so if I do get a pro model board, in my opinion... It isn't because I'm not at a pro level of skating. It is because maybe I've kind of weaseled my way into this gray area of people would buy my board with my name on it and, I, and I'm good at skating. I'm not incredible at skating. I am good at skating though, I will say that. And uh, I don't know, that's really all I have to say about it. That's why I'm not pro. And maybe I'll be pro in one day, I don't know.